Agent Carter, Season 1, Episode 6, Thoughts. This episode is called Ascent to Err. Another episode I love. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to, including this episode. But nothing that came out after this episode first premiered. So the top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the Sign After Strikers. And then there's some links to videos to help explain why this is such an important strike. So let's dive into the episode. So yeah, we open on of a flashback where the doctor, uh, Ivchenko, is, you know, he's he's talking about how this other, you know, yeah, someone else was, you know, basically, you know, the other guy almost definitely didn't realize, you know, no, like, if you're not completely dedicated to the cause, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna execute you on the spot. Based on later in the episode, I have to wonder if this was actually true. I guess maybe because he's he's clearly lying about at least some things, and he is working. He is still working for. I can't believe I'm blanking on the name, uh, but but yeah, the the organization, Leviathan. He is working for Leviathan. Clearly, he and Dottie both. But maybe. Like, he was trying to, he, he was using the story to say, oh, look how terrible they are. But in reality, that was something that actually got him to be completely devoted to them. Nicely done. And, yeah. Um, Dooley does engage in some more sexism and misogyny, but does also let Peggy, you know, chase her hunch. <laughs> And Angie does a great job delivering a uh, monologue, impressing several of the patrons. And, yeah, so Jarvis explains that the vault was built after Finau. You know, so I, I really appreciate how we're gradually learning more and more about Finau. And, yeah, clearly there was something very, very important there. Something, something very important happened there then. And let's see. Yeah, the the um, Sousa talks to Sheldon McPhee and gets a positive ID on Peggy, which is of course, you know, that is enough. You know, the, the what is Sheldon gets nothing out of. He doesn't know that. Oh, you know, it's not like ah, yes, I'm gonna get an SSR agent in trouble. No, he has no idea. He, you know, and he has no reason to lie. Let's see. For all he knows, it's a trap. And let's see. Yeah. So the the dentist, you know, gets very creepy and like touches Dottie on the leg, and then she uses dentist tools against him. Which, like, holy crap, that is horrific. And, I mean, I know I, I, I hate misogynists, but, that, yikes, that is, that is just truly horrible to do. He deserves it, but I just want to acknowledge, no, I'm, I'm kidding. Obviously, that is going at least a little step too far, even for me, but... <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, the they knew that the, we would get some satisfaction out of it. It was a bit of a mixed emotion kind of thing, because you know he's he's a real creep. He's he's gross, but it's also you know and and love the you know she's like, you know I haven't used one of these before, and uh, crap what what was she said something else? Um, hold on, maybe it's someone added it to the um, to, to the quote section. Um, let's see. Uh, maybe not. Hmm. Ah, yeah, apparently not. But but yeah, you know, just she's talking to him like a dentist talks to a patient, and you know she she get the the tool gets closer and closer to his face, and then it cuts, and we hear a jackhammer. Very very nicely done. Just yeah, very off putting. And, yeah, we get some more misogyny about Howard's many conquests. 
though I do appreciate, you know, Jarvis was willing to, to you know, be the, you know, to, to for when, whenever Howard want, was, you know, didn't want one of these girls anymore, Jarvis was the one to go and, you know, tell her that, so, yeah, now he's being, for you know, and, and he maybe felt bad, but he still did it, you know, and, yeah, Peggy says, you know, you know, he's, he's like, surely you would be able to do that without me, and she's like, that would be more complicated and less fun, and we get a montage of uh, girls telling him off and slapping him, and I really appreciate, you know, he's, he's like, oh, he's, Howard found a lot of violent girls, and she points out, I suspect they were considerably less violent before they met him, you know, which, yeah, that is sad. The, a lot of times, if a, if a woman actually does, you know, do something violent or, or really messed up, it's very often because, you know, it's not, only, it's not always one man, but it's usually men who've done something, you know, some, sometimes through patriarchy, sometimes you know, like, directly, and see, and, or, if, sometimes it's an individual man having done something directly, I mean, no individual man directly built patriarchy by himself, and I like the, the psychiatrist working duly, you know, and, I, I forget, but I feel like I heard once that, from, from a credible source, that the, the Soviets were, like, ahead of the curve with stuff like, like, they were, you know, they, they had this, like, manipul you know, yeah. They were, they were working within the, the field of, of, emotionally and psychologically manipulating you know more more so than western powers were at at that time in in 47 and i got to say i really did think you know we all thought oh dottie is there to assassinate him so that he doesn't reveal too much and then we see, you know, she's like sending signals to him and he's communicating back. Very nicely done. Just, yeah, he's not a defector. He's a, he's a double agent. He's undercover, you know, very nicely done. And yeah, you know, when he tells Dooley, I'm, I, I'm a psychiatrist, you know, I don't know about the, the inner workings of these projects, because I wasn't, you know, directly doing, you know, they should have brought a poet, or rescued the, the engineer, which, now I'm thinking, did Ivchenko manipulate the, the engineer into dying, maybe? Wait, was it Ivchenko who shot him? Crap, I, it's my, my memory, yeah. And, yeah, well, the message sent back, you know, new directive, kill Peggy Carter. So, just, yeah. And, yeah, um, Peggy finds a, a place that has been abandoned, and, you know, the, the mail hasn't been, you know, so, yeah, does appear to be, so, so yeah, that's where Dottie lived before going to the, the Griffith and, you know, Jarvis is, is standing there like, Hello, little person. I am the exterminator. Um, please go away. Yeah, just, just very, very funny. And, you know, I'm, I'm here. Have, have a nickel, you know. And, and you know, it's, and, and the kid smiles and turns around and walks away. And baby comes up, who are, you, who are you talking to? A future mafioso. Because the kid knew. The kid didn't care what he was there for. The kid knew. If I stick around for a little bit longer, if I, you know, if I stand here, eventually he's going to give me something to get me to go away. And just, yeah. And, 
yeah, Ivchenko tries hypnotizing Dooley, and Souza shows up just at the exact wrong moment for Ivchenko to, to break up the, the hypnotism. There's a lot of very inaccurate depictions of hypnotism. There's a lot of people who think it can do things that it can't. It is a real thing. It's not complete psychobabble. A lot of there's a lot of misinformation about it, but yes, hypnotism makes you more suggestible, which is what we see with Yauk. But it does also require focused effort. You know, it's not like you snap your finger and then just like that you have complete control. No, it takes time and you have to get the other person to focus. And you know, if Janko masterfully works, both Dooley and Yauk. You know, with both of them, he gets them to focus on something that they really care about, and then he's able to, to hypnotize them because he has their full attention. Very, very nicely done. And... Yeah, um... You know, the, the music quiets down and the, you know, the, um, yeah, several of the patrons leave and Peggy notes, you know, yeah, this is SSR, you know, this is right out of the handbook. And she starts fighting them and we get the, and the entire fight is set to, I, I guess it's, is it just called Good Day? You know, yeah, it's a good day by Peggy Lee. Yeah, Peggy Lee wrote and performed it, and it was co-written by Dave Barber. You know, a piece of music from that time, and yeah, it's a it's a great like, cause you know it's a it's a very pleasant piece of music. It's it's very happy and upbeat whilst she's kicking ass, but it is also this thing of you know things are going well, and yeah, Peggy's absolutely def you know demolishing them, so it is going well, and yeah. Jack knew her well enough to be waiting outside, and yeah, she you know she hits him as well. Souza refuses to to shoot, so she she walks. You know, he's like, if you run, you know, we'll we'll know it was you. And she's like, everybody runs, and then she said she just keeps saying everybody runs like twenty seven freaking times. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of that movie. I just could probably tell. But yeah, the... the um, let's see... Yeah, and, you know, Dooley puts every SSR agent on finding Peggy. And it's, again, this thing of, you know, I, I love seeing women beating up men in action scenes. I don't know if it's, again, you know, but they've they've been doing this since... The first Captain America movie, you know, Peggy is able to just slug men that are, you know, bigger and heavier than her. And I'm not one of the people who obsess over that. I, just, I, I prefer it when they fit in a little bit more of an explanation. Like, if she's hitting them with a heavy object, that kind of thing. You know, but, yeah. Let's see. And the... Yeah, uh, uh, so Ivchenko hypnotizes Yonk, and yeah, really great at the mind games. Like, he picks up, you know, okay, so this guy's a middle child, he wants to prove himself, but, you know, Jack Thompson keeps taking all his, his cases, and and just, yeah, it's it's, and it's very credible, the things that he's picking up on, and him being able to pick up on them and this sort of thing. And, yeah, Peggy managed to get outside the window. And then Angie spots her there. And because of the trust that they've built, she is willing to, to really cover for, for Peggy and almost gets her out safely. You know, and, and the, yeah, so, you know, she opens the door and, and the, the, the agents come in and they're like, okay, so... Did she say anything? And Angie... 
says, well, you know, she's always complaining about all those fat-headed male agents that she's working with who don't take us seriously and it's just can it I guess it's too late for Angie to get her own spin-off show cuz I I kind of just want to watch you know you could just you could set it in the coffee shop and every so often someone comes in she's interacting with them cuz she's just she's such a fun character And I feel like, yeah, my the accent slipped there at the end, at least. Anyway, the, yeah, and <laughs> she cries on cue. And, you know, the others are, you know, the, the SSR agents are like, please, can can you, um, Miriam, can you make, stop doing that? Like, they're, they're acting like, it's like, of, um, like a, like a, talking, talking to a plumber after the, the toilet explodes or something. Like, they have no idea which... You know, an argument could be made that it's it's sexist. It's just I feel like we're laughing more at the the guys who are freaking out about a woman crying than laughing at a woman crying. And you know, at, at one point, like you know, Angie like goes all you know very close to to Jack Thompson. He like you know puts his hands and and just just a little bit like. Just, it's, yeah, it's very funny. He looks like he has no idea what he's dealing with. He looks so extremely uncomfortable. And, yeah, and, and you know, yeah, they ask Miriam, can you do something about this? And, you know, she says, uh, you know, actors wear, actors wear their emotions on their sleeves. I couldn't, you know, calm, calm her down more, any more than I could Sir Lawrence Olivier. I mean, Olivier. And I do appreciate, I, yeah, and I added the Sir. I don't think she called him Sir, which is a good detail, because certainly back then, I don't think an American would have sir Hold on, was he, had he been sir in 47? Anyway, not a big deal, but, you know, I believe the, the episode got it accurate. You know, a lot, a lot of British people are going to respect calling someone sir or dame because they, you know, there's a, not, not everybody, but there's a, there's a culture of respecting the, the, the monarchy, the, the royal family in, in England, which <laughs> America kind of fought a war to get away from that whole thing. You know, I'm not a royalist myself. I do live in a monarchy, but... Yeah, not a big fan of, of royal families. Let's see. And and yeah, the you know, Ivchenko is close to getting to to the weapons, but he's told, you know, only what was it, the the director, only the chief can can get into where it is, you know. I want you to do one more thing, and he gets him to to walk into traffic, which is of course, you know, yeah, there's no way for it to be traced back to Ivchenko, you know. And, yeah, so Peggy is is trying to get out, and Dottie, you know, gets, you know, yeah, is, is in the hallway, and, and Peggy is trying to get, you know, past. But Dottie, you know, she applied the lipstick. She did, in fact, figure out what it was. You know, and, you know, yeah, big old kiss and knocks her out and she gets out the knife. And, you know, because they're, you know, the, the, the SSR agents are behind her and they're seeing, oh, it's, it's another woman. They're not taking women seriously. And, you know, I appreciate that, like, um, the, the, uh, hold on. The, um, was there a, um, hmm, maybe not, um, oh, here we go, yes. You know, the, this thing of, you know, if Janko points out, you know, the reason they're training young girls to be assassins, you know, Jack Thompson says, why aren't, you know, 
why don't they want grown men? And Evchenko points out, women are often overlooked, taken for granted. They can slip easily through a man's defense. Very nicely done, uh, you know. And that's the, you know, yeah. Like, when he says that, we think, ah, yeah, you know, psychiatrist, he's gonna, he understands their methods. But no, like, thinking back on it, yeah, there's, he's, he's like, hiding a bit of admiration in there. He's like, yeah, we're so freaking smart. We're, you know, but just, yeah. So, yeah. They, you know, the SSR agents don't think Dottie is dangerous, and she plays along. It's, you know, there's a very, it's it's a lot like, you know, Catwoman in The Dark Knight Returns, you know, pretending that she's just this, you know, innocent, frightened young girl, you know, she, she fainted, you know, oh, I, I didn't see what happened, I just... I came in and I found her like the you know so they're you know they're not gonna have questions for her because she doesn't know anything you know like presumably someone knocked down Peggy but if Dottie didn't see who why why question her she's not gonna you know they they don't need a, a psychological profile of Peggy they have Peggy they're arresting her they'll talk to her you know Dottie it's only if she saw what happened so very very nicely done and you, you know she manages to hide the knife before the and I do appreciate that they actually put cuffs on her and it did seem kind of ridiculous that Sousa was like are those really necessary yes they're necessary did you not see you know the earlier scene you, sh you should rewind the episode it's a it's it's real fun seeing her kick ass at a, it's a good day but yeah, I do appreciate that, that Jack Thompson has now stopped underestimating Peggy Carter. Although it was obviously not quite how we had hoped that would go. And... Let's see. The, yeah, and we see, you know, Angie goes to, to Dottie's room. And I, I quite like, you know, sometimes she calls Peggy English. She calls Dottie Iowa. You know, just based, yeah, based on where someone came from. And, you know, we, the audience, of course, know she did not, in fact, come from Iowa. But, yeah, you know, she could pass because she spent all that time watching Snow White. I'd like to think that the, the live-action remake is going to be used for less nefarious purposes and I do still hope that I've I've heard some some rumors. I really hope that it is still going to be Rachel Zegler. I I realize she some of what she said, considering her age. You know, yes, she is not the best feminist. She's not as good a feminist as as would be. You know, but give her a chance. You know, she's she's. She's still young, you know, it is, she doesn't have as much perspective yet. You know, I, I think, you know, I believe she can, she can end up being a, a really great force for, for feminism, you know, but, yeah. And I, I absolutely, I have absolutely no respect for the, the conservatives who are saying, oh, she shouldn't be Snow White because she, thinks that women should have agency and she said that she thought it was scary when she was a child. Have you watched that movie recently? I have. It's you know, there's a lot about it that holds up. It is kind of intense for children. Like the the part where she's alone in the forest. Yeah, I don't blame uh, any child for turning that off and not going back to it, you know. N anyway, the the yeah. You know, we we close on the the um, ah, what's it called? The um, they're going to interrogate Peggy. So, uh, yeah, really, really psyched to see what happens next. We are most of the way through. This, yeah, uh, we're three fourths of the way through the season. There are only two episodes left of the season. Really excited to see what happens. It it looks like it's going to be, you know. Like, so, so, yeah. Peggy has been found out and arrested by the SSR. They think that she is a traitor. Dottie is out there. 
but Peggy does also know now, so she'll see her coming next time. And, and I like that, you know, you're using my lipstick. You know, even if she's passing out, she still has a clever, you know, she, she's not like, ah, you jerk, you stole my, you know, you're, you're knocking me out, you, you, you stole from me. No, she's like, that's my lipstick, kind of, you know, it's, it's a clever little remark. And let's see. Yeah, we know that Leviathan is active in New York with, you know, Ivchenko trying to get his hands on Howard Stark's vault. Which, when it was empties, was not Geraldo's fault. Yeah, really excited to see what's going to happen in the last two episodes. So, the episode's IMDb Trivia... Right, the monologue that Angie recites is from A Doll's House by the Norwegian playwright Henrik Ibsen. And let's see... Oh! Chief Dooley says his wife had an affair with some guy from Hobogen that was 4F, graded unfit for military service. Frank Sinatra was from Hobogen and was 4F. Yeah, um... You know, yeah, he was he was quite the ladies' man. And let's see. And I think also, sadly, also quite a, a jerk. And uh, let's see. Yeah, and yeah, someone points out, you know, 4F was also what Steve Rogers was given. And let's see. Oh, right, yeah. Roger Dooley asks Dr. Uchenko if they have King Kong in Russia. Shea Wiggum, who plays Dooley, went on to co-star in Kong Skull Island from 2017. Oh, Agent Yauk says how the name is pronounced. Same surname as the late Adam Yauk, R.I.P., of the Beastie Boys. Oh, huh. Originally, Yauk was supposed to be hit by a bus instead of a truck, but it proved too difficult to find a 1940s bus. Yeah, that, I can see, yeah, I don't, I, how would you get your hands on one of those in, in 2015? Yeah. And I think that might be about... And yeah, um, Miriam saying, I knew she was trouble the minute I laid eyes on her. Those girls from the telephone company are all the same. That's pretty funny. And let's see. Yeah, I definitely thought there was an excess in this episode of, like, what's the word? Like, there was, there were way more than there needed to be of, like, um, references to, to Howard being with a lot of women. Though, you know, I did appreciate the, the montage And I think that might be about. Some... Yeah, and it's, I, I like, you know, when Souza asks Angie, did she, you know, she ever tell you about her work? You know, like he's hoping, you know, oh, maybe we can get some information about Peggy's spy business from, from Angie. And she responds, you know, she, yeah. Her response is, at the phone company? Just the usual stuff. Complained about her fathead male co-workers a lot. 